Finally, one of the biggest and most long-running snap issues is being addressed. No, it's not the performance issues or the boot time issues. That's still very much a hit-and-miss work in progress. No, it's not the loopback device clutter. And no, it's not the fact there's only one store, and that store is proprietary. Okay, even with this, snaps are absolutely not perfect. But let's be honest about the victories that Canonical makes and congratulate them for actually doing something good. So during the Ubuntu Summit 2022, which is basically a yearly Ubuntu conference about various Ubuntu things, Canonical quietly released a new feature, postpone updates with refresh hold. For the entire lifespan of snaps, they have automatically updated, and people have been asking for a way to disable this basically since snaps first got created. I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the earliest bug reports on snaps, and finally, you're able to actually do so. Now, you've technically always been able to do this, but it's always involved some workarounds that weren't exactly the most sensible things to do. So it'll involve doing things like deferring the updates and then sticking that inside of a cron job to make it so it constantly gets deferred. Or I've heard of some people redirecting the domain for snaps into like the local host, which, you know, will work, but also then makes it a pain to manually update. This new method, however, is basically dead simple. So with snap refresh dash dash hold, it is going to accept a duration. Now this duration can be made up of seconds, minutes, and hours. So you can have it be something like 72 hours, 57 minutes, uh, 200 hours, 30 minutes, and 17 seconds, or something like that. But if you don't care about specifying an actual time, because you could do this with the old method, the new thing that'll let you do is if you don't specify a time. If you don't specify a time, it defaults to forever. And you can also specify individual snaps, like Firefox and other things you may be forced to install as a snap. But where it gets really, really interesting is if you specify no snap. You just run the command by itself. If you do that, it is going to hold back every single snap. So if you just run snap refresh dash dash hold with no duration and no packages, it holds back every single package until the end of time or until you go and tell it to unhold the packages. This is the way that people have wanted snaps to work basically since the start. Now, besides the number of affected packages when specifying the individual packages and running on everything, there is a slight difference with these held packages and the way they interact with various different operations. Now, both of these are going to disable the automatic updating. But if you go and specify an individual package to update, like I want to update Firefox, that is going to let you manually update it in both of these situations. Where they differ is with doing a general update. So you say, I want to go and update everything. Now, in the case of the individual specified packages, that is not going to update those packages. But in the case of, but in the case of holding back everything, that is is going to update them. Basically, if you want to manually update one of these held packages, use the operation that gets you as close to the information as possible. And the reason for the difference is very simple. If you specify an individual package you don't want to update, there's probably a really good reason why you didn't just specify everything. Let's say, for example, you know that a problematic update is going to be released, either buggy or maybe a rogue developer or some weird other thing like that. Or let's say you know that your project only works with a specific version of the application and you don't want to update until you've actually actually migrated to the newer version. Whereas with the general stopping, you don't care about any of the individual applications. The reason you've stopped it is you just don't want the automatic updates happening. Now, I briefly mentioned this before, but you can stop a package being held back as well. This is done with the dash dash unhold command. You can either go and do this on individual packages or on every single package. And then when you go and unhold a package, it is going to go back to working with the update commands like it always has and also being a part of the automatic updates. And while this all sounds really great, 
don't celebrate too much too soon. You may have noticed this little warning message at the top here. Experimental warning. The hold feature is currently considered experimental. It's only available in SnapD from its edge channel. So the edge channel is basically the beta of the beta. This is the development stream, the rolling release, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it is potentially really unstable. You probably shouldn't be running it on your day-to-day -day system because it might just break at any point. And also, the feature could be removed before it makes its way over to stable. So that does mean it's still going to be quite a while until you install Ubuntu and then out of the box, it basically is just working. Hopefully by 23.04, which gives them like four, five, five or so months to actually get that done, it's going to be instable and then regular users can very easily go and do so. And then finally, snaps are going to work like every single other Linux package manager actually functions. But if you really do want to go and use it today and you know all the risks you're getting into, you can go and switch over to the Edge channel. Now while I and many people haven't exactly been a fan of the automatic updates, they haven't been without merit. There is a good reason why Canonical has been so pushy about having these. A lot of Linux systems run really outdated software, and this can act as an attack vector. If we're talking about a web server, a corporate system, various other systems, not usually for your like regular desktop systems, these may sit around for multiple years without being updated. This can lead to a bunch of security issues just not being patched. And Canonical rightly isn't a big fan of this. And the way they wanted to address this is by having things automatically update to make sure these problems are actually being fixed. But in the same vein, they do come with a lot of drawbacks, especially for those desktop users. So a lot of people still sadly have data caps. Data caps, at least for your like home connections, aren't really a thing in Australia, with the exception of like a satellite connection. When you have, you know, fiber, copper, things like that, you don't really have a data cap here. But that's not the case all around the world. A lot of places still have them or just generally have a really slow connection. Also, when you're running a specific version, it is a known security element. If you're properly doing your testing, properly doing your research, which probably isn't happening for a home user, it might happen in a corporate context, you know which issues are affecting this version. Whereas with a new version, sure, you'll get this perceived better security, but it might turn out that newest version has some issue that wasn't known about. Also, the exact same is true about stability. You know the conditions under which the application is going to operate. And if you go to a newer version, maybe the developer pushes out a broken version. Maybe they go and change the way that something works. And then something that relies on that application doesn't work like it should. Maybe you like move around the UI a bit and then you have to go and like relearn how the application works. And then let alone the issue of general control of your system. It's my system. I want to update it when I want to update it. I don't care what is best for me. If I want to run a really outdated system, let me run a really outdated system because that's what I'm going to do. What I do find really strange is after all of this time of seemingly not caring about the issue, finally giving the ability to disable automatic updates. I don't know why they've done so. What I don't find strange though, is the fact they haven't really made that big of a deal about it. If I had to guess, my guess would be that some corporate customer wanted some way to perpetually hold back an update. Whatever their reason is for it, maybe like they have a project that only relies on a specific version and they were like, you know what? If this doesn't support it, we're just gonna go and use something else. And they're like, hey, Maybe, maybe we're actually wrong this case, and I guess they actually wanted to do it. It's very likely they still don't want you to be using it, but I'm here. So I'm going to tell you about it, and if you want to go and use it, go and do so. Ultimately, the best way to never update a snap is to just never install them, but if you have to be using them, this feature is now available. It's also really strange that I don't think anybody's actually made a video on this yet, which is weird to me. 
Also, Pharonix, I don't think, has an article about it, and they talk about everything. An email sent on the kernel mailing list, there will be a Phronix article about it, but if it's going to be free real estate, then I'm going to take it. So I hope you learned something, and if you're using Snaps, you know, go and make use of the feature. Let me know your thoughts on Snaps in the comment section down below, and whether you're going to make use of it or not. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.